the land from the Nile to the Euphrates. Genesis 25 and verse 13. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to the generations the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebojeth, and Kiddush. Isaiah 42, 12, Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare His praise in the islands. Islam spread to the small islands as far as Indonesia and the Caribbean Sea. Or the Caribbean, as some people like to say. Isaiah 42, 13, he shall prevail against his enemies. In a short period, the kingdom of God on earth was established with the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Isaiah 42 fits the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam exactly. What a great description in the Bible about this prophet. King David referred to him as my Lord. Let's look at Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible. The Lord said unto my Lord, and I don't think the Lord was talking to Himself, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lords are mentioned here. The first Lord, the speaker, is God. The second Lord, the one spoken to, could not be God also. As David knew only one God. So it would read or should read, God said unto my Lord. Who was that whom David called my Lord? The church would say Jesus. But this had been denied by Jesus himself in Matthew 22, 45, Mark 12, 37, and Luke 20, verse 44. Oh, anyone? Oh, okay. <laughs> Matthew 22, 45, If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? Mark 12, 37, David therefore himself called of him Lord, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Luke 20, 44, David therefore calleth him Lord, how is he then his son? He excluded himself from this title as he was a son of David. How could David call him my Lord if he was his son? He argued. Jesus said in Luke 20 verse 42 through 44, How say they that Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore called, called of him, Lord, how is he then his son? Jesus must have given answer not recorded in the four synoptic or canonical gospels, but mentioned explicitly in the gospel of Barnabas that the promise was made in Ishmael, not in Isaac. And I covered this before in the class. David's Lord was thus Muhammad, whom he saw in spirit. No prophet ever accomplished more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The work of all the prophets together is small compared with what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did within a short period of 23 years and which remains unchanged until now. Even great people, there is some articles written about the hundred most influential people in the universe. And I'm trying to think of the guy, the English guy, who... Can anybody think of his name? The English guy that said that, that placed Muhammad Sallam in the top most influential people in the universe. Um... Hey, wasn't no. it Mike, um, Michael? No. Mike Wade's No. Anyway, you can look it up. You can Google it later. 
some of the brightest minds in the world, and it's it's right here, it's right on the tip of my tongue, and it just won't come out. Michael Hess. Who? Michael Hess. Michael Hess. There's somebody else that said it as well. Uh, if you actually just put in Google, Muhammad, the most influential in the uh, world, you'll find it. N many, many geniuses of the world have made this statement that no other human being in the world accomplished what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did in 23 Michael years. H. Michael H. Hart. Michael H. Hart. But somebody else also said it. I'm I can't remember who, but another great mind said it besides Michael H. Hart. But that's good to know. Thank you for looking that up. One more comparison and then we'll uh, pick back up inshallah next week. Art thou that prophet? The Jews sent priests and Levites to John the Baptist to inquire who he really was. In John 1 verse 20 to 21, and he, John the Baptist, confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not. He said, Art thou the prophet? <coughs> and I need to look this up because I've got a spelling error there. I'm going to need somebody with good eyes to read this for me because I cannot see this without my glasses. John 1, verse 20 and 21. Quickly. Okay, this is John 1, and you want to read verse, is that 20 and 21? Okay, read that. Read those two verses for me. It starts in He. John 1, verse 20. You see next to 20. Where's 20? No, okay, where's 20? I can't see. What does it say? And he confessed and denied. Can you read that? Next to 20 and 21. And denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. 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 And they asked him? And they asked him, what then are the Elias? Elias is he safe? I am not art. Art thou? Art thou the prophet? Thou the prophet, and he answered no. All right, so art thou the prophet, and he answered no. Can you read the next verse, 21, right? Or is that 21 too? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you for reading. So what is the crucial question that they were asking him? Art thou that prophet that is coming? Who was then the long-awaited prophet after the advent of Jesus and John the Baptist? Now, if it was John the Baptist they were addressing, they could have been asking him if he was Jesus. Because they knew that Jesus had already been around. Right? Mm -hmm. Was he not the one likened to Moses mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, 18, who is Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we'll close on this slide today. Baptize him with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew 3 and verse 11. I, John the Baptist, indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Could that have been Jesus coming after John the Baptist? So there's got to be another prophet coming after John the Baptist. Yahya. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He 
shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. If Jesus was alluded to here, John the Baptist would not go back to live in the jungle again, but to cling to him and be one of his disciples, which he did not do. So another powerful prophet was here alluded to, and not Jesus. The one coming after John the Baptist could not be Jesus, as both were contemporaries. Here again, was it not Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alluded to by John the Baptist? If it was not Prophet Muhammad sallallahu then we are still waiting for a prophet from the land of Kidr, from that genealogy. But we all know that it's been fulfilled. We'll do one more slide. The least in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is quoted in Matthew 11, 11 saying, Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Can we believe that John the Baptist is greater than Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and many other of the prophets? No. How many pagans did John the Baptist convert, and how many followers did he have? Very few. This is really not the main point here, though. The question is, who was the least in the kingdom of heaven greater than John the Baptist. For sure it was not Jesus, as at that time the kingdom of heaven was not yet formed, and he never claimed to be the least, i.e. the youngest one. The kingdom of heaven consists of Allah or God as a supreme being and all prophets. The least or youngest one is here, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another sign crystal clear in my way of understanding anyway that the youngest prophet the least that would come is prophet Muhammad sallallahu may Allah help us to grasp this stuff may Allah make it fortify us in our own faith we have an undefiled book but what's so amazing to me that despite the fact despite the fact that this book has been changed it fortifies, verifies, validates everything the Quran says. Bits and pieces all the way through it. Validate, verify, and fortify what the Holy Quran says. And very simply to me, I mean, I, is this complex? No. No, it's, it's pretty clear, right? Okay, I just want to make, it's crystal clear. So inshallah, we will continue the tafsir of this verse. We're going to look at what the Holy Quran says. And the Bible talks about the comforter. And how that, that comforter is in fact Muhammad, inshallah, next week. So we're continuing on the tafsir of this one verse. Before we go to every nation as a Qibla, I have to see how much um, author, may Allah bless him, uh, covered when he was here um, for me. But either we'll go to that if I need to cover a few things or I feel like it would benefit you or we'll move on to, I think, verse 148. But it's phenomenal, folks. We just can't read that verse and say yeah without giving the proof of it. And I think we've done that. I love you all for the sake of Allah. I hope to see you with your friends next week. Bring somebody to the class, inshallah. And it is a sadness in my heart that we are teaching something so important that every, certainly every revert needs to hear. And I believe, deemed by Allah, the burden of Arabia says that every Muslim should hear this and look at how many people are here. So bring somebody with you so they can hear this, inshallah. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.